So guys, before I start the video right quick, we just had another six-year-old shot. That's the second six-year-old in the last week that we've had shot in Chicago. And this one was, I believe, in the Inglewood neighborhood on the south side. So prayers up for that six-year-old to pull through. And for both six-year-olds to pull through. There's been eight kids shot over the past few days. And in the streets, nobody's off limits. Not kids. And not each other, okay, when it comes to gangs. They'll be quick to take away a kid's parents for life. Not stopping due to the pain that's going to bring that kid for the rest of his life and cause him to struggle. Growing up in foster care, wherever it might be. Without no father, without no mother. Sometimes shooting the kid himself. And then turning against each other. And we have a prime example of gangs turning against each other, man. In this and another video I'm going to probably be dropping pretty soon. Um, but with this case, it's the, it's the Latin Kings, man. And, um... A guy who rose to the to the top of the hierarchy in the Latin Kings. But while everybody was stabbing everybody in the back, everybody was turned against him. And he was turned against other people too, although not by cinching on them. He had planned to whack one of the other members' sons. Of all the things that cause guys to leave gangs is that, you know, when guys from their own gangs turn on them. This story is about another white Latin King, an Italian guy who actually also had ties to the Genovese family out on the East Coast. And uh, this, is a, this is a case that's been going on for a few years now where he was ratted out by basically his own guys while they were kind of like accusing him of all type of stuff that he wasn't even doing. Everybody was just snaking him, you know, and he had risen to like the top of the, uh, of the hierarchy, even though he wasn't Latino. But uh, this is a guy who goes by the name King Merlin. That's his uh, like street name. And his uh, real name is Michael Cacciatelli. He was just recently sentenced in this uh, racketeering case to four years, uh, even though, you know, it could have been a lot more serious. He was facing 20, but uh, he's done that time already, time served, and now he's going to be getting out. So he's not in the prison system database right now as far as, like, when you look up inmates, he's not in there. So he may already be back out on the street at this point, but uh, he's an Italian guy that became a Latin king. And this is something pretty unusual. I don't see this too much. I see guys from other races going to like the Italian gangs, but uh, this type of thing, like typically mm, they'll join their own or, you know, if, if it's in the Chicago area, that might happen. You might see that like if a guy grows up in a neighborhood with a lot of Latinos, but uh, and he admitted ordering murders and assaults on rival gang members and suspected traitors in his midst. He admitted to drug trafficking and racketeering for one of the most violent and pervasive street gangs in the country, they're saying. And this is according to Mass Live, but um, the Latin King gang leader in Springfield, native Michael Cacciatelli, was sentenced to just four years in prison this week in a highly unusual hearing in Boston that was closed to the public by U.S. District uh, Court Judge Raya Zobel. So Cacciatelli is now 43 years old. He was facing up to 20 years behind bars after getting caught in a massive East Coast FBI sting called Operation Thrown Down. In 2019 now that's thrown down t-h-r-o-n-e referring to the latin kings he was indicted along with more than five dozen other gang leaders and associates so a spokeswoman for the massachusetts u.s uh, attorney's office declined comment on the secretive nature of the hearing and oddly it was flagged on the daily public court docket so catch you tell his attorney a guy named uh, michael burbo he's a boston lawyer he had no comment beyond saying that there are, quote, many reasons why court hearings are closed to the public. So Burbeau reported his client was sentenced to 48 months behind bars and after asking for time served. So given prison good time and other factors, the sentence amounted to time served. And Ketchatelli does not appear in a public U.S. Bureau of Prisons inmate search except in connection with a previous illegal firearms conviction in 2019. So in a sentencing memorandum filed in advance of the hearing, Burbeau hailed his client as a, quote, changed man who sought to get released from prison to care for his father, who is afflicted with Parkinson's disease. So Ketchatelli is also known, like I said, as King Merlin, or King M, and he was the lead target arrested in his Forest Park neighborhood in Springfield during a dawn raid, and that's Springfield, Massachusetts, by the way, not, uh, not Illinois, in December of 2019. He pled guilty to racketeering crimes in April 2021, admitting specifically to ordering a murder and a beatdown of two other gang members, respectively, for circulating a rumor that he was cooperating with law enforcement and it was fake. He was not cooperating with law enforcement and actually members in his gang were cooperating against him. So neither suffered harm because cooperating government witnesses were already embedded in the gang in that state according to an FBI affidavit. So in one instance, Ketchatelli ordered designated shooters to kill one associate 
unless he agreed to make a video saying that he was not an informant. During his 2021 plea, uh, Ketchikelli also admitted that he was a Latin King leader, uh, talking about violent proposals within the East Coast faction of the gang born in Chicago with members in, of uh, Puerto Rican descent in the 1950s. So you guys know the Kings, you know, they started off as Puerto Rican, but uh, there's a lot of them. I, th I would say there's probably more Mexicans now that are Kings, like here in Chicago, than there are Puerto Ricans. Uh, it's still a big Puerto Rican gang, like on the north side, but um, on the south side in Little Village, you know, you got a lot of, and, and north side too, I mean, there's a lot of like Mexican Latin Kings. Catatelli is something of an anomaly since he rose to the ranks of the national tiers of the gang, even though he's Italian-American, as opposed to Latino. He straddled two criminal worlds. Since he also had a bit of a foothold in the Genovese crime family through his uncle, David Cacciatelli, who's also from Springfield. So the elder uh, who was, in, in, you know, connected to the Genovese family was a long associate of the, quote, Springfield crew of the New York-based crime family, primarily running bookmaking operations in the 90s and 2000s. He was convicted for bookmaking in the, early two, in the mid 2000s and served a short uh, prison term. He's currently on house arrest after getting arrested in December of 2019 and charged with possessing illegal ammunition after a search of their shared home. So uh, David pled guilty to the weapons charge and was sentenced to one year of house arrest. And uh, so he gets like bit roles in mob movies sometimes. And this, he said he's lost contact with his nephew months ago. And Michael Ketchikelli didn't contact any other family members after his sentencing that took place uh, on Tuesday. So David said, I have legitimately not had contact with my nephew in about a year. So David Cacciatelli's former allegiance with the, uh, with the Our Lady of Mount Carmel Society Social Club in Springfield South End neighborhood was apparently his nephew's foray into the venue. The club was an informal stronghold for Italian mobsters for decades, but it opened its doors to other ethnic groups in recent years. So it used to be like a mob hangout, but they've let other ethnicities start hanging out there. And the FBI affidavit outlining the quote thrown down investigation revealed Michael Cacciatelli hosted at least two summits at the club in 2019. During one of that summer, according to the report, he and other Latin King members discussed the terms of a proposed hit on another member's son. So they were going to whack the son of their homie. If you like, I'm not going to go through the entire report from the beginning, which uh, I had actually done. It, it turned out to be like a super long video that I had done last year, but I never uploaded it. It's like everybody's stabbing everybody in the back. Like everybody's talking about, oh, we're homies, like king, king, law, blah, blah, blah. Bro, it was all fake. Like it was all just an act. Like they were all stabbing each other in the back, man, snitching on each other. I mean, Michael Ketchikelli was not snitching, but people were snitching on each other in, in the gang, like other guys, just, you know, whacking each other, whacking each other's kids. Like, you know, and it, just like I was saying with this uh, most recent video about uh, Eric. You know, his own friend getting whacked by another king. It's like, bro, I don't know how anybody, like some guys, you know, they say they, they join this thing so that, you know, because they feel like they're going to have a family and they call themselves a family. Uh, during one that summer, according to the report, he and other Latin king members discussed that ter those terms and the news prompted the mayor, who's also a, an Italian guy, Dominic Sarno, to publicly denounce the alleged goings on. So... He quickly announced plans to deep six the club's liquor and entertainment licenses, prompting a temporary closing of the club. And the club now is back open. So that club, you know, it was like um, it was like a hangout for the mob that he was like having Latin King, you know, meetings over at. But uh, they eventually busted the guy and, you know, got got snitches. And some of these charges are like very, very serious, but it was part of a plea deal, allegedly. So. Yeah, pleading guilty for, I mean, a lot less time, man. And uh, everybody else, though, that was, like, turning on everybody in, in the Kings on the East Coast was having guys over here talking about, like, you know, the East Coast Kings, like, they're not real and, you know, they're all, they're not solid. And, bro, it's the same thing everywhere. Like, that that was that was tripping me out, like, the way guys were saying that about, like, the East Coast Kings. And, guys, it's the same everywhere, man. It's the same everywhere. Like, guys stab each other in the back everywhere. This is, like, the main reason I never wanted to get into this. So, yeah, man. Uh, j just another example of, like, how, how fake the gang life is. But um, hopefully this guy will make a new life for himself. He's back out on the street. Hopefully he won't go back to the Kings and will have learned his lesson. You know, uh, just like everybody else. But when you see the report, I'm out.